Hello everyone, this is Mark Flopsy Shepherd once again and today I'm going to show you how to use the Neolemix graphics set tool. So don't worry, I've opened this and I've already got a graphics set that I already made in um, the graphics set tool when make when when it when you open this up. So don't worry that uh, there's stuff in this terrain piece and objects uh, section here. In fact, I'll show you what you should get when you open it up to be fair this is what it should look like you know it's very blank and everything and uh show you and i'll show you what it should look like once you once it's finished and everything you should have a massive list of pieces and this massive list of objects Okay, so the goal of this video is to help you help uh, familiar yourself with the graphics set tool here. And I like having it in the shrunk down version here. You can enlarge it, but it doesn't really have, pose any benefit because it's no bigger. So anyway, you don't, first of all, I don't know how to use every single thing in this tile set tool. So, um... So for example, I don't use anything in this import and export or help menu, although help just tells you what version you're using. Um, nothing you need to concern yourself with there. Uh, custom sound manager. I couldn't help you with that either. <laughs> the only thing I'm, the only thing I, the only menu I concern myself with here is the file menu, and that is good enough to make a decent tile set like scrap brain like I did so don't worry too much about things like that unfortunately I can't teach you to do absolutely everything in this you know that's I can just go as far as teaching you how the tools work and everything and the rest of it can, is up to you really you know so anyway first of all paint is your friend here this is where you're going to create your images for the uh, tile set tools unfortunately you have to make the images exactly entirely yourself um you can do what i did the scrap brain and rip it from other games in which case you're going to have to get the game you have to get yourself hands on the image files yourself so anyway um there'll be uh I'll show you what my tile set folder looks like as well. So anyway, I advise when you're making terrain pieces to name them after numbers. That way you don't get so confused. And then if you're naming them after objects, you start with zeros. And I should probably explain as well why I'm doing this. Terrain pieces are things that Lemmings will be able to physically walk on and there's no interaction with them whatsoever other than the fact that they're solid terrain that the Lemmings can walk on. So you should be using your, uh, you should be making your ground pieces and all your steel in the terrain part of the, uh, terrain part of the graphics at all. So only add, you know, physically solid things on here. And your objects one is for things like trapdoors, exits, one-way arrows, which every graphics set needs to have, so make sure you add them. Uh, trap hazards, electrics, and you know, traps and everything. Teleporters are in there as well. More traps. If you have splat pads in your graphics set, they go in here. One-way fields. You need to make sure you put both of them in as well. You know, because you, you can't it's advised where you don't do reverse reverse reversals of items in here you need you know it's advised where you put one for the left and one for the right in a lot of buttons you know basically things that have require let me to interact with it and it does something there that's where all your objects go and they're all non-solid things as well so it's definitely things that can't be walked on and if you want to put background images as well like i've put all the sonic sprites in and everything you can do that but yeah that's a rundown of what uh, terrain and objects are so yeah anyway paint is your friend um, and another thing you should need to familiar yourself or, well familiar yourself with is if you go into the color editor and you change the hex values of well, I'm not sure the hex values 
change the values of red and blue to 255, you'll get this nice pink color. Now the reason why you'll need this pink color is, if you have a background to your object, I'll show you, I'll show you, I'll use an example. Um, let's, uh, let's just put some, oh, it needs to be thicker than that actually. <laughs> um, Yeah, not exactly nice on the eyes, I do apologise. <laughs> so anyway, I'll do that and I'll save that. Save it on the desktop, it's untitled. And yeah, when you drag it into the editor here. And then first of it, first of all, we'll start a new one anyway. Add a new terrain object and then you need to import the image because what you'll just get is a black background there where you, and you've got to import it. So what we'll do is we'll go to the desktop and we'll find our little untitled file. And there we go. And if you use transparent color, there we go. All the pink disappears and all the stuff that isn't pink will be on the image. So yeah, it's not exactly the best example. Um, so yeah, that's that's a basic rundown of how you make the, the image. and. It should be noted as well that the whole image that like this came in is a 1696 by 1070 foot two pixels. That is exactly the amount it will go into the graphic set as. This is why paint is your friend because it allows you to get the image down to how you want it. So if you don't want, so. It doesn't matter all in all about the pink background because as you've seen in the editor, the pink background will just, you know, become transparent. That's the best way to get transparency in an image anyway. So that's a solid terrain now that a lemming can walk on. So the best way you can do to say to test the file is I'll use the desktop again. Um, so when you save it, make sure you save it as a .dat file. I'm not sure if that's required, but I just put .dat on the end to... And uh, make sure you save it into your test folder. Um, sorry, if you want to use it in the editor, you need to make sure that you save this file in the... Uh, in your um what was it um neolemics editor styles folder there we go it's in there now so now when i open the editor i'm not going to extensively use the editor in this tutorial i'm just using it as an example of what i've just created in the uh, graphics set tool so now the tile set should be coming up in the list of styles there is test and as you can see that didn't seem to work out so well actually oh there it is there we go there's our little scribble <laughs> and we can put a trap door on top of that as well um, well, we haven't got one in the. See, this is what happens when you have an empty object uh, list. You won't have anything in the. Uh... So I'll use the castle trapdoor. And let's test it. Just to test it, see this is walkable terrain. There we go. And that's an example of how you bring your creations to life, people. So, anyway. So I'm going to go into something a little bit more advanced now. Um, so you know how to make terrain item. You know how to make terrain now. And of course, if you ever want to make, if you ever want, if you ever want to make any terrain into steel, just tick that, and then all that will, that entire, that entire terrain piece will be all steel. Um, I don't think there's any way of making it half steel. It has to be entirely all steel or not steel. All steel or all not steel. You can't have a half and half 
thing on it. So let's go back to my uh, scrap brain uh, tile set anyway, because it will help me explain the next bit a bit better. So in the Seblems project. So as you can see, I've got all these solid things and uh, they're all named piece underscore hash. That's because when they get imported into the new format, it will make it easier for when that transition occurs. So this is not completely necessary at this stage. You know, this is something you can just go back and do when you do the conversion, when it has to be converted over to the new style. But don't worry about the new style. This is just about making your graphic set in the old style. So, okay, so if you put insert, it will basically insert where you are in the list. So you don't need to concern yourself with that. I just use add, I never use insert because add and just using up and down is just as good. And hmm, this seems to be something new. Seems to change the piece number automatically now. This is something new that I haven't encountered before, but. So anyway, that's how those things work anyway. It should also be noted as well that once you've made your graphics set, you should, before you start creating levels with it, you should be happy with, you should be happy, you should determine whether you'd be ha you're happy with the order of the pieces before you start to make tile sets with them. Because once you start swapping the order of the pieces after levels have been created, because I'll explain. For example, if we take this first piece at the top here, which is this piece here, that'll be referred to as terrain piece number one in the index of the Neolemix editor on the old style. So, for example, if I swapped it with this one down below, like that one, look. Now every instance of that piece will now become this piece in the editor because it'll, this is index number one now. So I've tried to exp I've, I've tried to explain that anyway, but you know what I mean. It's just important that you keep the order the same once you've decided that you're happy with your tile set. So first rule is, you know, decide on an order. Don't do what I did in the scrap brain graphic set here and just have a random order of pieces, you know, with no organization. Um, well, there is a little bit of organization, but it's the, the tile set just seems to be a bit all over the place, as you can see. But yeah, that's the first rule anyway. So I've taught you how to make an image in paint and then import it into the tool as a terrain piece at least anyway. I've taught you what this is. That's how you can rename the piece if you want to. So if you select a piece, it's not changing because they're all named the same thing. But if I go down to steel here, look, you'll see it changes to steel one. And that's really the way you should be naming pieces as well. You know, come up with basic names like this, you know, for steel and all that. With terrain pieces, it doesn't matter so much, I don't believe, I believe, but um, yeah, anyway, all right, I'm waffling on a bit too much about all the basics here, but I just want to make sure you get a thorough understanding of what this bit's all about, because if you get this down, you're, you're, you're halfway there, I think. Um, so now we'll go on to the complicated bits. Now, another th the second thing you should... Uh, familiarize yourself with is this general options thing down here now what I don't like is how it's down here on the bottom right corner because I feel like it should be right up the top because if you don't do anything with these things then you're going to have a bad time in my opinion so anyway sprites you can ask for having the default sprites or the Christmas sprites now I don't know how to add any more than this so this will be outside the scope of this video to be honest but if you wanted the Christmas lemmings that's where you'd select them but if you get the default ones you'll just get the typical blue shirt green haired lemmings as your sprites but if you wanted to make your own sprites that again that is way beyond the scope of what I understand so 
you probably have to have someone else teach you that or teach yourself alternately i think there's a nice guide on the forum and a good person to talk to about that is gigalem if you go on the discord because he's making his own sprites sorry to pin that on you gigalem hope people don't start coming harassing you but i know i know you don't mind anyway you like people coming to talk to you um anyway this is the mask and the bridge color so this is the way you decide what color your builder bridges are going to be so yeah it's this customizable you can actually decide what color your builder bridges are going to be and in the scrap brain tile set they're yellow but to determine the color you need to change the values of these values here look for example i'll change it to 56 so it goes to a green color but the color is determined by these three values so just uh, mess about with it if you want a good guide go to the edit colors thing and just pick a color that you want on the spectrum and it'll give you the values here so if you want a good guide on how to get any color on this just uh, mess about with the values on this as well and then alternately just uh, enter them in on here and you'll get that color so yeah and you can do the same with the mini map color this is if you don't have the high res mini map on it will just be the app this will be the color of the outline as you can see i kept it yellow i just kept all the colors the same and the background color this is if you just this is this is the background color of the level but scrap brain i just leave it black well to be honest now i think of it i would probably benefit from having a brown background See, I'm teaching myself things here. Actually, I've got a good way of coming up with that. Um, go into the scrap brain folder. Scrap brain graphics set. There's a background in here that what matches the exact color I want. So I could probably eliminate the need to have a background. No, I don't want it. I want it open in paint, please. So what colour is that? Okay, that's 14, 19, 11. So again, put that into this little editor here. 14, 19, 11, I think that's what it is. Red, green, blue as well, make sure they're in the right order. Yep, they are. 14, 19, 11. And there you go, that's an example of how you can get you can get a colour in paint. If you're not sure what a colour is, just uh, use this little uh, use this little syringe thing. I think it's a syringe and It'll pick that color for you, and all you need to do is go into edit colors, and you'll have that color selected. And you've got red, green, green, blue there, and there's the values for you. So if you ever want to find out what color is that's already on the image, just use that little thing. But yeah, I think most of you know how to use paint anyway. And it's just a case of, I think a lot of people will be familiar with it. So back to the graphics set tool anyway. So I've explained what all these things are. It's just how you make your background colors. And yeah. So I've explained everything about that and I've explained everything about these. And you're probably wondering what all these object setting things are. And so when you select terrain pieces, you're already wondering what the grayed out arrows are but when you got objects these are actually parts of your animation this is where it gets really complicated and i'll try and explain it best i can so try and keep up um so for starters this little tick down here zoom small images i always keep that ticked anyway just so you can see the image very clearly um, black background uh, it's only relevant on pieces which will have yeah it'll just basically make it transparent and you won't see a black background so show trigger area you only see that on objects and i'll show you the way it happens 
Right, so on a trap door, it will show you where the lemming will spawn on the object. So it is possible to have a trap door and it, the lemming will spawn up there, for example. You know, right at the top right, if you put the trigger area up there. And I'll try and demonstrate for you. Um, I'll probably come up with a better example, one that actually has a size as well. So as you can see, the exit trigger area, if the lemming walks over that, then they exit the level basically and also I should probably mention as well this is a common mistake that I made and I want to make sure you lot don't make the same mistake is when you make a trigger area you need to make sure so this is a bad example here um, what about the locked exit? No, the locked exit's got the same bloody problem. Um, yeah, here's an example, look. You need to try and put a blank line at the bottom of your image. Like that, look. And uh, the way you do that is you make sure you have an extra pixel at the bottom of your image, which is pink pixel line at the bottom of your image which is pink um, I hope I'm explaining this correctly I'll turn the trigger areas off see it gets confusing look because the trigger area also shows up as pink so but anyway back to what I was saying about the exit and the trigger area notice how the position is the X coordinate look so look, I've changed it from 11 to 5 and it's moved to the left now. So if I change it back to 11, it'll move 6 six to the right. So it's an X and Y coordinate, basically. But it starts on the top left here, hence why they're really, the Y coordinate's really big. So if I change it from 23 to 5, for example, it'll go up there, look. So... It's kind. Of, it's a bit of a weird. It's a bit of a weird system because it starts from the top left of the image and it goes eleven across and twenty three down and it starts the trigger area in the top right corner there, top left corner, right there, where my pointer is. And then you need to specify the size of the trigger area. So it's five pixels by six. Again, this is an x and y coordinate. So five pixels across and six pixels down. So anyway, back to what I was trying to explain about the fact that there needs to be a blank line at the bottom because you want your you want your trigger image to you want your trigger area to see again the scrap brain is a bad example. I need to load another graphics set to show you what I mean. So the exit, well these ones do the same thing to be honest. Uh, let's load one. It's probably a bit more established. No, because uh, that's where I ripped the. Uh... Well, I'll try someone like Gigalem. No, he's making the same mistake as well. Okay, then. All right. Just for transparency, I'll try Echo 2 lot. No, he's making the same mistake as well. Never mind then. Okay, back to Scrap Brain anyway. So anyway, if uh, you put this exit down such that it was touching the bottom, you know, touching the terrain exactly, then the lemmings will not exit. And I'll explain, because if a lemming's walking across such that it's exactly lined up with this trigger area, it needs the, it actually needs to be inside the trigger box. The bottom of the lemming needs to be inside the trigger box. It can't have it... Um, you can't have the lemming crossing crossing the bottom of it, if you know what I mean. So realistically speaking, when you put this exit down, you need to make sure the trigger area has actually got part one line of the pink down into the ground. That way the lemming will, when the lemming walks across the exit, it will actually go into it. I hope I'm explaining that correctly. I think the best way to show it is in the editor. I'm only trying to it, iterate this a lot because it's a mistake that's quite off, quite commonly made. Here's, for example, here's my contest level. And I'll show you the trigger area. 
yeah see I'll try and zoom in because it's quite hard to see yeah can you see how the trigger area is one pixel down into the ground there because the lemming actually needs to be inside the trigger area for it to activate because for example if it was up here so now this shows an example of an exit which actually has it done properly such that if the exit's lined up with the ground there's still one pixel sticking out the bottom of trigger area but again i probably need another example so i'll load up my other scrap brain tile set level oh the trigger area seems to be displaying correctly on this anyway what you need ideally is you need to have the trigger area overlapping with the ground that's good so don't worry about that and in a similar sense yeah so anyway i don't want to go i don't want to dwell on that but uh anyway i'll go on to something that has a yeah like the trap door for example now what you need as the first image in the there's 10 images basically there's 10 images showing you how a trap door opens and it shows you at the bottom here how it does it and for this you don't need to be too worried about because you can just get you can just quite easily get it from ripping the image from somebody else's tile set and i'll show you how to get it from someone else's tile set as well for example if you want it from my tile set you can put export strip and i'll show you what it looks like when you export it i'll export it to untitled and uh Let's go to desktop. Once we can open that, look, it gives you each. Uh, it gives you each uh, state of the image. That's what a strip means. Look. So, the way a strip should work is with a trap door. At least this is. I think this is a pretty unique. I'm not sure if this is a, a unique example. I'll have a look at the strip for the locked exit. Yeah, it's the same with a locked exit. So you need you need the image you need the image first of what the trap door is going to be like when it's open because and uh, then the next image is the trap door closed and then each one after that will be each frame of the trap door opening. So that's how each image should go anyway. And if you're ever confused about whether it's right or not, I accidentally closed the graphics set tool there. I'm sorry. And exit, there we go. If you're ever confused, you can just press preview. Okay, that's a bad example. Use the trap door. There you go. So it will show you what it will show you the image you can even zoom in as much as you want as well if you if you're ever confused about whether it's doing it correctly so the preview thing just shows you the trapdoor animation well not just the trapdoor animation whatever you're on and it shows you the for example look, it shows you one away arrows there and you have to animate everything on objects if it's a moving object so don't be don't don't be uh, don't be put off by things like that. Uh, if you need to, uh, if you need to borrow things from other tile sets, all you need to do is press export strip. You can just open the tile set file in in this tool, go to the object you want ripping, and press export strip, and just save the strip, and then you just import it where you want it in your tile set so for example if we press add you'll get a no trigger here so 
don't be intimidated by this all you're doing is you, you just need to go to this drop down menu here and tell you tell it what object type it is for example it could be an exit uh, one way field left uh, we'll go for one way left arrows here but anyways we want we want let's go to trap door no not not trap trap door <laughs> And which is entrance so we import strip go to desktop get all right yeah and I should probably uh, mention as well when you import objects if there's already tra if it's already transparent in the background just keep it on alpha channel otherwise if it's got a pink background which it doesn't really show very well here Make sure you press use transparent color and the pink background will disappear. Um, I've never used this tick box sources lemon I re re mini resolution. Um, if um, I think if you've got a strip here, if you press vertical, it shows it tells you that all the image all the images are vertical. I haven't really got much experience with um, strips, so I can't really tell you how I can't really tell you about any of that. But when you import it, I know for a fact that you need to specify how many pictures are here. In which case, this is ten. So there we go, and you should get each individual image then. So there you go, that's a sign that you've done it correctly if you manage to get it animating itself on this screen here. So in which case, there we go. And we'll preview it, there we go, that's how you set it up. And important thing here, make sure, you need to make sure you set the trigger area as well. So for example, we'll put 512. Make sure the trigger is on show. You can see the pink dot there. Look, so we need to move over a little bit more. So 15, no, a bit more. 21, 22, 22, 12 sounds about right. But if we want to check the proper one, go to the trap door. It was 24, 13. So if you have a ripping image, if you have a ripping images from other tile sets, just pay attention to these values because then. It just makes it easier when you're entering them into the new ones as well. Um, and here's an example for one way arrows look. <laughs> So basically you should have eight images just uh, mapping out one transition of it and what will happen is once it gets to past the eighth image it will loop around again so in a nutshell you'll just be getting something that looks like this so that's just eight images looping so it's uh it is a lot of learning to do and i'm trying the best i can to in to help um but if you want and if you are confused about what these minus insert and pluses are this is in, this is if you did what i did and <laughs> i'll show you look this can be the this if if the whole strip thing confuses you there is an alternate way of doing this you can just have each individual image in a separate file and uh just add them in but each time you press plus it adds a new frame look and you just go to each individual frame and put it press import and then you press the image you want to add in only use import strip if you want to do what i just did and 
import the whole lot in but you should only do that if you've got like loads of images on top of each other or side by side because if you have uh, if you have them horizontally you can just press horizontal ori hor orientation but most people do it vertical so that's the standard um and if you want to get rid of images, just go up to the image and press minus and that deletes it. So minus is basically the delete button and plus is the add, add, a, uh, add, a, add a frame button. So these minuses and pluses and these arrows are basically for switching. The arrows switch between what frame you're currently on. If you want to insert one in the middle. So there we go. What it's done is it's moved the fourth image back and it's added a new fourth image. So what was image number four is now moved up to number five. So this is in case you want to insert one in the middle of what you're currently doing. Because there's no because when you add one, I think it just adds one to the end. So insert is in case you want to insert anything other than at the end. But anyway. For example, if you had an empty frame in the middle, this is what it looks like, look. I mean, it's not bad if you want to have a flashing effect. So it's kind of like a nice thing to find out, isn't it? So anyway. Um, so I've gone through trap doors. I've gone through one-way arrows. Uh, if you ever make one-way arrows, you need to have the trigger area just the size of the object. So... Just put the site. You don't need to put a position. If you if the position is the whole object, just leave it at naught naught because you're starting the trigger area from this the, the very top of the image here at the naught naught position, and you're making it a size of 32 by 24. That's how that works basically. Position is where the trigger area will start, and size is how big you want it to be. But this position is always an x y coordinate of where you want it to start. And the trigger area can only be a square. It can't be anything other than that. It can't be any other shape. That's the unfortunate restriction of the trigger area. And I'll show you an example where it can be particularly messy. Like this spiky cog, for example. I had to make it this whole uh, square here. <sighs> and it just looks messy, doesn't it? <laughs> but anyway... I'll keep the trigger areas on and for example this flame look I'll show you look now this flame is only made up of two frames and what I did was I made one look very dark and dreary and then I made one look very sparkly and pop out a bit and that's uh, kind of like a beginner's guide to animating things I made that all by myself I didn't make the flame object by myself. I actually ripped that from the scrap brain tile set as well, the flame image. But only one is actually a flame image, and the other is uh, one that I kind of revved up myself. So, and the zap is only two frames as well, look. So it just goes to show that you can make nice looking uh, traps with just two frames. The squish hazard's quite a hard one to imitate, though. See, as an example, look. Here's a pretty basic animation. And teleport's another interesting one. just an example of what you can do with the images and you've got to remember each individual image has got to be a frame for example look at this uh, one way field so with that I just made each line move down with each frame and I think it's only four frames yeah it's only four frames. Each line just moves down in each image, and then eventually it maps, it it wraps around on itself again. So, 
just an example again and uh, this conveyor belt how many frames is that I think it was only three frames yeah so just going to show that animating objects like this that's a free frame animation that is so again it's not it's not rocket science and with locked exits look you've got to show the exit in a locked state and it opening and I think that's again only four frames one with it fully open one with it fully closed one with it partially open one with it nearly open and then the fully opened image pre-placed lemming you shouldn't need to mess with that that's uh that's uh, something you can just import pickup skill again that's something you can just borrow from other graphic sets so there's some things that are just already made and you shouldn't need to make yourself trapdoor and exit trapdoor you can probably rip from the tile set if you just want it to be this basic open the trapdoor type thing i mean my only quibble is is if you're borrowing it off a custom tile set like what i did i borrowed this from gronkling cyber tile set for scrap brain always ask the author's permission always ask for the author's permission i'd say i mean if it's something like you know you're borrowing it from the original tile sets you know though in all no and original lemmings you know that's fine that's public domain as far as we're concerned but i'm just saying if you borrow it from anybody else's tile set unless they've borrowed it from the original tile set but if it's something that's you know they've customly made always ask for permission and you know make sure you credit them as well it's just common etiquette on the community here and you know it's not exactly you know we're not we're not we're not all evil ogres you know we'll we're not going to say no you can't use it it's just you know we'll, we'll, we're just happy that you ask you know we'll, we'll, we'll always say yes <laughs> Um, and obviously if you want to use objects that other people have made as well make sure you ask their permission as well you know it's not just you know with trapdoors and exits you know make sure you always ask permission i took these are one-way arrows from the hell tile set in the original lemmings so if you're curious where these arrows came from and uh i forgot what i was going to say now um Yeah, I was going to tell you which things don't need to be remade all the time. I can delete that now because I don't need it. Um, yeah, and it's it recommended as well. If you want to make upside down item objects, you should, uh, or, you know, side facing ones. It's advised that you make a separate one for that because... Um, if you flip objects trigger areas do weird things and uh, it's advised you don't use inverted objects you know especially when it's things like traps and all that because the uh trigger areas just do weird things that's why i made an upside down electric zapper and an upside down, side down flamethrower another thing it's not completely necessary to your tile set backgrounds I mean, I've been told that if it's going to be a background, don't make, don't pick moving background. Make sure you pick, uh, what is it? Where is it? Background image. That way, you can pick which background you want to use in the the Neolemix editor, and the backgrounds will appear here actually it doesn't matter it just shows the full object list regardless um yeah anyway um let's carry on going through objects that you need to make sure you have tile set halves okay the bare minimum is well they're not necessarily required now but i'd say the bare minimum object wise you need a trap door an exit you definitely need one way left and one way right and one way down arrows they are required and traps aren't necessary teleporters aren't necessary you know you don't need to have any traps whatsoever these are all optional locked exits and unlock buttons they're optional as well you don't have to have them pre-placed lemming is a must 
in the old format only. Once it's in the new format, they don't they're not needing your tile set, but cross that bridge when you come to it. But if you're using it for the old format, you must have a pre-placed lemming in your tile set. Pick up skill, yep, they're required. So the two important ones down there, pre-placed lemming and pick up skill. You can if you want to use pickup skill, it's advised you use this one here with the blue circle on it. You can get it from any of the normal, the original tile sets if you need to, need to, and it'll appear in this objects list here on the original tile sets. Um, and same with the pre placed lemming. Um, so, seven things trapdoor, exit, one way left, one way right, one way down, and. Pre-placed lemming, pick up skill. And I believe that's it. I think that's all that's required. They're the seven basic objects that your tile set should have. Um or something else I was supposed to say as well. I can't remember what it is. Um Now it's gone. Um, okay, so what was I going to say? I think that's it then. I think that's all I can explain to you. Like I said, if there's anything else that you're unsure of and I haven't explained really well in this tut very well in this tutorial, just uh, drop a comment below and I'll try and answer it the best I can. Because I'm sure there could be a million one questions think about this. Uh, graphic set tool and anyway I hope this has helped you and I hope that this will inspire you to make your own creations and by all means create you know the worst you can do is you know you publish your tile set and it's on the forums and you know people will just be saying oh you can improve this you can improve that you know that's the worst that's gonna happen you know people are not gonna turn around and say this looks horrible we're not like that you know <laughs> and I mean I took something that I took something like scrap brain I just used the original sonic images and made sure they were just uh, did the transparency with the pink around the edges and uh, that tile set came out all right so as I said um, for organize it, organize, organization purposes, dedicate a folder to storing all the images for your tile setting and name it. Oh yeah, that's what I wanted to mention. If you're naming your tile set and it's something you created, put your name at the start. You know, just, uh, you know, don't put your full name, you know, just put something, just put enough of your name such that people can identify you. Like if your name's uh, Strato in Sendus, like, for example, uh, just put Strato, that'll be good enough. You don't need to put, or you can do what Gronk thing did and just put Gronk. <laughs> uh, there's some examples here, Proxima, Ray, uh, RT. I'm Flopsy, but I shorten it to Flow. Um, but anyway, yeah. Uh, if you want to save yourself a lot of trouble in the long run, make sure you get the name of your tile set right first. You know, just make sure you put stick your name in it in some way or another. But anyway, yeah, uh, yeah. Just make sure all your images are stored in a folder like that. And as you can see, with the scrap brain pieces here, if you just want, if you don't want to, if it's not a square piece, like this for example, try and zoom in. You know, just make sure it's pink where you don't want it. Don't want it to be part of the way where you want it to be background. Make sure it's pink and make sure it's filled in like that. And remember, it's 255 red and 255, uh, 25, 255 red and 255 blue for that color. And that will automatically transparent, 
automatically be transparency in the uh and all you need to do is you need to pick your image and then press use transparent color that's not that's not really a good example but if you press use transparent color that's the color it's referring to it will just get rid of that color for you and it will just make that that'll be the transparency so yeah and just for simplicity purposes like i said at the beginning if it's a terrain image just put a number if it's a object uh, you can name it if you want and if you want and most importantly if it's a if it's a frame if it's a frame in the uh object you know put trapdoor one trapdoor two i know i put trapdoor one there but trapdoor trapdoor two will follow it and trapdoor three trapdoor four trapdoor five trapdoor six you know all the way up to the last one then you know when you come to putting it all into your graphics set tool it makes it nice and easy and i've abbreviated it for the one ways well oh one way down o w d uh um for a one way right i put o w r one way left o w l owl <laughs> and uh if you're putting uh if you if you if you're putting frame numbers for objects i just uh, instead of I've, for example you know the objects i've numbered i've put o in front of the numbers to signify they're an object but if I've then got frames in them, I put O of O thirty, O thirty A, O thirty B, O thirty one, O thirty one A, O thirty one B. That's a that's a bit complicated to be honest, because O thirty one is actually O before O thirty one A. So O thirty one is the first frame, and O thirty one A is the second frame, and O thirty one B is the third frame. But that's just my system. You can have you can have your own system in place. That's just a, that's just a suggestion. You don't have to take these suggestions but yeah just keep everything in the folder make sure you keep the dat file in here as well that's 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 a key thing you don't want to put the dat file somewhere else and if you want to use it in the editor you need to make sure you copy this dat file into your uh yeah, let's have a look um make sure you copy your dat file in to the neolemics editor folder and then into the styles folder and you can't do this while your editor's open either. If you if your editor's open when you do this, you need to make sure you close down the editor and restart it because the, it will not refresh the list otherwise. It will only it will only check this folder when you start it up. So yeah. I hope this is a good start in helping you trying to create your own graphic set. And we all can't wait to see what you come up with. <laughs> and I hope this has been a help to you. I mean, it's better than anything else. And to be honest, I had to learn to make all these things on my own. Any, uh, I had to learn how to use this thing all on my own pretty much anyway. So this is just, you know, what I've learned from messing about with it and making two tile sets with it. And yeah. This has been Flopsy86, and I hope this has been very helpful to you. Have a nice day.